All right, y'all. So um, I'm getting started here, and I'm starting like immediately and talking. So yesterday, um, I did a post on Salcone, and uh, sorry, it's cold, and I turned off my heat because my bill was really high. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, um, we had this post yesterday. I had I did a post on Salcone, and um, it got a pretty fair amount of feedback. And then the discussion moved into something that I discussed, that I talked about uh, three years ago um, in regard to the demographics of sneaker culture. Now, most people look at when you look at a big big business like Complex, they always tout that they are the leaders in youth culture and that youth culture drives sneakers and it drives music and everything else. And in a sense, it does. However, um, there's a complete and utter misconception about the demographics who are actually buying sneakers. So yesterday, um, Greg left a post. Greg, who's a manager at Eblins, he, um, I, I said it would be interesting to get a survey and get the ages of everyone who kind of popped into the store. And then he came back and he said, you know, um, I, I really could do that, but, you know, that's not a part of my job description, so I can't really get away with it. And I was like, okay, well, yeah, I understand that. And then I was like, man, you know what? If there was a survey, I guarantee you the people coming in to buy sneakers are not the people that everyone thinks. And because it's not, sneaker stores haven't changed in over, sneaker stores haven't changed so it goes back to something I wrote, and I wrote this in 2018, and I talked about the shifting demographics of sneakerhead culture. So what am I getting at here? Sneakerheads are getting older. Although there are a lot of people that are entering this business, those people do not have the same qualities as people in my age group. And if we're looking at late 30s and up and 40s and even into the 50s, which I'll stop it at the 50s because people that are over like 55 they're not really sneaker culture people um and i say that not disrespecting ogs and hip-hop people and stuff like that but i say that in regard to they don't buy as much and i can understand why people target youth culture youth culture is constantly look uh, um, attempting to look good but it shifted and all right I can show you better than I can tell you and probably if you're on a bigger screen you can see what's over here to my side and that's a comment from a guy named Mike Williams and I put this in a book that I wrote back in 2019 and he was like even though I'm just entering my 40s I caught my favorite pair of kicks for the first time his comment here is critical for a ton of different people especially these stores who are getting ready to encounter the loss of Nike accounts now yeah he's buying Jordans because our generation, we couldn't afford those. The dope boys had the Jordans and stuff like that. Now you got a generation of people who are buying Jordans, but they don't know the history or the story behind it. And when OGs, people like me, when we walk into sneaker shops, when we walk in, it's almost offensive. And I can't find a better way to say that. And I hope I'm being clear. I hope you guys can follow what I'm saying. You know what? I already had things set up and I got off track already. What I'm going to bounce back to is Clark's. And I'm using Clark's in this video for a particular reason. Clark's is a big company. Clark's International. We all love Wallabies. We all love Clark's, right? And my generation, we love Wallabies and Clark's. Well, we wore them before, but we love them because of Ghostface. Let's keep it real. Wu-Tang, Clark's. These are our shoes just as much as Timbaland, Clarks. We wear Clarks. I got Clarks in my closet right now. Have I put them on in a while? No, I haven't even put them on in a while. But I'm not really going out and I'm not kind of dressing up a little bit. It's an interesting thing to look at. One of the shoes that Clarks made a few years ago was the Trinomic. And it was a very, very good shoe. And it ended up on one of my lists for my top 10 shoes. They actually did a Marvel collaboration as well. But here's something that I want you guys to notice. Clark's is a big company. Clark's has 6,000 subscribers on YouTube. They are underutilizing the platform. But there is a lot of, and, and I get that 
companies are kind of fractured and the year has been long, but this is something that goes back a long way. This is not new. You're talking Clark's has 6,000 subscribers. Yesterday, um, actually the 8th, here we go, January 8th, they dropped this video with a hip hop legend. And I'm putting this in here. The streets are always Slick Rick the Ruler. All these years later, I love walking around New York City. Now, this is the thing. You see this video and those Clarks don't exist. I probably wouldn't wear those Clarks because that sole is huge, but I would definitely buy a Slick Rick themed Wallaby. I would. I mean, that's just the bottom line. And I get that Clarks is more of a UK brand, more of an international brand. And in America, although we do have a Clark store in Memphis, but the two women working in the store, every time I go by, it's two women working in the store. And there's nothing wrong with two women working in the store. I go in looking for like a Wu-Tang Wallaby or something like that. None of it is there. They are clearly catering to an older female demographic. And I understand that. But there's opportunity for Clarks if they presented the store in a completely different way. But here's the thing. This is just like a fantastic video of Slick Rick. And once again, Slick Rick is the golden era. I mean, and he keeps kind of popping up every few years or so. We know he had some issues and went to, you know, jail for a little while. But Slick Rick is a legend. And they were going to try to de deport Slick Rick. And I'm like, no, don't free Slick Rick. But this is the thing. This video has 8,541 views since January 8th. When I go back to the Clark's YouTube, they have videos that they have up. 448, 116. Let's go. We're going down. And this is in order, right? We go back two months. And finally, we get here where you got a radical sum, uh, Somerset, and it's got 2.4 million views and 305,000 views on these three. But I'm nearly guaranteeing you that they put ad money behind these YouTube videos. There's nothing wrong with that. And you have to push your videos out there for them to be seen because there's so much kind of noise out there in the atmosphere. But we go back here because we want to stay on this Slick Rick theme. Here is where a lot of the times where businesses create concepts and they put something together and then they advertise it, but there's no intention whatsoever to drive engagement. And I think that's a mistake. I do love the idea that a business like Clark's, Clark's is not saying we're trying to sell you on something. We just want you to know that Slick Rick. I'm typing in Slick Rick on the Clark site and I find nothing at all. Nothing at all. So here we have Clark's on the YouTube. They don't have the video on their platform. And this is what I talked about in regard to Saucony yesterday. And I talked about Vans controlling their content inside of their eco, their digital ecosystem. Clark's does not have anything about Slick Rick on this page. Nothing. They have allowed Slick Rick to utilize it on his platform. And that's cool. That gives Slick Rick some content. But there should be some type of cross promotion between you and the influencer if you're attempting to do something. So we go back over here to the Clark's website and nothing shows up when I search Slick Rick. Now, maybe I just spelled Slick Rick wrong, but I don't think so. There's nothing, nothing. So when I go to the home page, there's nothing. These are small things that you can't do. Now, getting back to the shifting demographics, Slick Rick is in his 50s, right? Sneaker culture is in its 50s. Let's be real. 40s and 50s. Brands are overlooking an entire demographic that could provide a considerable bump in purchasing. The stores are not laid out correctly. They're targeting youth culture, and I understand it. But if you go grab some random kid right now, and you grab a person like me, and you compare sneaker closets... There's no comparison. We buy kicks. You're overlooking us. It's not a smart thing to do. That's all I have to say. Wrapping this one up, and I'll see you guys on the next one, which is coming right up. I got a lot to talk about.